Hello, just bring you back. Uh, just took the Humber Bridge viewing area. Thought I'd uh, park at the back bit because uh, someone over there's uh, got a bigger base system in their car than I have in my <laughs> in my band gear. Anyway. Just having a quick quick ride out uh, checking out the checking out the seat with the gel pads in and the new new colors and Lynn's brought the stitching down there to sort of complement what's going on with that uh, yeah uh, it's first ride out I've only done only on 15 miles so far but it uh, feels nice it's got um, two centimetre thick gel pad where I've been sat on it you can sort of see the outline of it um, she did say for a few for a few rides the vinyl will sort of stick to what's underneath for a bit until it the stuff underneath sort of forms a skin and then it'll stop doing that sucking in but anyway looks decent feels comfortable so far if uh, it's been re-sculptured a little bit we've taken a bit out of here a little bit out of the width there um, yeah it's literally <laughs> she only finished making it uh, about an hour ago so straight on it anyway that's that and uh, I'll uh, catch up when I get back home and have a bit of a ride and We'll be going out with Tracy uh, in a few days, so we can test out the comfort. Um, got some new base stuff going on as well. So that's all changed. So I shall see you in a bit. Alrighty, back home now. Okay. Um, it's much, much better. Uh, I'm not going to say it's a panacea and it's cured all ills, but it's... Uh, at least a hundred percent better than it was if that makes any sense um, yeah much bigger improvement um, still not perfect I don't think but um, there you go so Tracy's dying to get out on this uh, so it'll be weekend Saturday or Sunday we'll get out and do a nice long run finally and uh, the good news is no skip back a bit um, just before I got back home we're about five miles away I stopped and I've, I've adjusted the suspension softened it back to solo riding I forgot that I'd put it on I'd stiffened up the suspension for um, luggage and pillion and that um, it's a pure guess it's just sort of going by what it roughly gives you in the manual um, so I've been riding around with it quite stiff rebound on the back end or stiff damping stiff suspension anyway it's not the preload it's the damping so anyway I've uh, stopped and softened that up um, and then of course now when I go out with Tracy next I'll have to wind it up one or two notches like I used to do on the V-Strom and on the XJR um, it's there to be adjusted so um, I found that adjusting it seemed to be the right thing um, what else was there oh yeah um, I'm totally used to the bike now uh, after the last two rides I'm just happy at home it's fine uh, it still clonks but it just that's what it does it's a clonky gearbox dry clutch clonky gearbox but I'm getting a lot smoother now at gear changing um, getting used to riding around in silence um, in fifth gear at 30 mile an hour just cruising um, uh, relaxing and then um, I did open it up once on a on a big long road with no bad things in uh so i let rip and uh she can really shift when you when you want it to you get past five six seven thousand revs it really moves so yeah but on the whole 95 percent of the time literally um uh what's it what's it called not quick shifting uh uh, short shifting 
<laughs> I took some getting used to. Short shifting, um, just using the torque, which is what I was told by everyone to do. And I'm doing that now, and it's fine. And yeah, one of the previous videos, uh, I cut myself off halfway through sentence at the end when I was saying one of the things that had um, sort of probably probably made me think differently about the bike apart from all the comments from everyone saying this is how you ride them um, a really strange thing uh, my mate down the bike shop uh, not Colin who owns the bike shop but Michael who works in the bike shop who's a brilliant guy um, oh, don't sit on that it's made of plastic um, Michael who works in the bike shop uh, just bought a 1150 GS and he said he he traveled 165 miles on a train and then bought it and the first 30 miles 20 30 miles whatever were in cities and towns and stuff and he <laughs> friend of mine this guy works in a motorbike shop and he's done more miles in one year than I've done in a lifetime um, he got on this thing and it, all he could in his head it just says Springy was right this is a pile of crap I hate this why have I bought this what a pile of junk what a clunky old bus um, but anyway once he got out of the towns um, and he rode the next 130 whatever miles it was back home and got used to it he absolutely loves it now so uh, he managed to do in one night what it's taken me uh, a month, maybe five weeks to do. So uh, anyway, we we've uh, exchange exchange uh, insults. No, not insults. Uh, exchange criticisms. No, not exchange criticisms. Um, anyway, we've been conferring. So that's that. Right. I'll wrap it up here for this bit. Um, Gonna go and have some dinner. It's getting late. It's uh, well, not getting late. It's quarter past eight in the evening. Go and get some dinner, and then um, I shall follow on from this bit uh, with some new base gear. Um, so I'll film that tomorrow and stitch it all together. And funny enough, it's just literally started raining, so that was good timing. So um, shall get this in the garage. So I'll see you in a bit with a bit of base stuff. Right, uh, not on base yet. Right, anyway, so happy now with the uh, BMW. Feels comfy-ish. Um, no, I mean, I feel comfortable with its quirks. Um, I don't think now about it's alien and different. It just feels like the BMW now. So I'm happy now, happy I bought it now. Um, absolutely love the screen. Did I say I love the screen? Uh, how many times have I told you I love the screen? That's just brilliant. Every time I come into a town or a village, I wind the screen down, get some nice air blowing across. And then when I pick up the speed outside urban, rural, um, suburban, rural areas, I uh, put the screen up. Uh, yeah, amazing. So, love everything about it now. I've got used to the brakes as well, which is, uh, they are designed to haul you up when you and you uh, combined with two people and luggage and everything, it's about half a ton. So, yeah, if you're doing a ton and it's half a ton, you need some serious brakes to pull you up, and they do. And then at low speed, you just got to be gentle with them. So I've learned that. Um, never really touched the back brake anymore, which is a bit weird for me because I used to. Or I've always, I've always, I've always front and rear braked equally, doing my own sort of traction control ABS thing. But obviously this thing does it for you anyway. So don't think I ever touched the rear brake. Um, it's a bit scary the rear brake. It's way sharper than the front. So and it pulls up the front as well at the same time. Anyway, so, yes, um, so everything about it now, I'm happy with. The only one thing that is really, really annoying that I do still 
not hate, but it's really annoying, is the stupid switch gear. I still, it's, you know, I'm, I'm four or five hundred miles in now on this bike, and I, I can find the indicators fine. I can indicate left and right, no problem, because you've got a switch on each handlebar end. That's fine, but finding the cancel switch, which is just above the right hand, um, the right hand thumb lever thing uh, there's your right hand indicator there's the cancel and I can I, I just can't I have to look at the handlebars to find it which is really dangerous I don't always have to look but I find myself nearly turning on the heated grips and stuff um, anyway that's the one thing now that I don't like about it the horn is insane. It actually sounds like air horns. It's like a truck. A twin air horns on a truck. I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it's like snails. But it, it's... Honestly, I shall... Next time I do a video... Or... Hang on, where's my keys? What would I my keys? I don't know if it'll come out well on YouTube with the compression and everything. But uh, you would literally kill... Uh, pensioners and small children if you use this in a built up area uh, let's turn everything on plug your ears up noise alert <laughs> that's ridiculous <laughs> but it was really good for um, moving pigeons uh, sorry, not pigeons. If it were pigeons, I'd just run them over. Sorry, pigeon lovers, but, you know. Um, sorry, collared doves. It was a road full of collared doves in this little tiny peaceful village I was going through. So I thought, I'm toodling along in fifth gear, 30 mile an hour, silently on the bike, which you can't hear because it's, it's silent. Wafting along peacefully in the village. <laughs> and there's... Uh, there's about 20 coloured doves in the road. And I thought, if I don't do something, I'm going to hit some of them, which I don't want to do, because I love coloured doves. Um, so I <laughs> bang the horn on. <laughs> There's like 10 dead through shock coloured doves in the road. <laughs> oh, man. Let's uh, change the angle. Anyway, uh, base stuff next, which will be tomorrow, but... A bit in about two seconds. Uh, see you in a bit. Okay, just before we do uh, base stuff, uh, this is where I have my seat done. Um, bit of a bit of info there, and that's the website. Um, yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the contact details. Anyway, brilliant. So, on to base stuff. Right, base stuff. Uh, sorry about the LED, but uh, I need that on so you can see my new base amp. Um, the rehearsal studio we went to uh, on Tuesday. Uh, fantastic. Um, a pleasure. To go to really really nice place um, what can I say about it uh, it was comfortable clean uh, lovely facilities and um, yeah perfect parking all the gears there really although the base stack he's got up there albeit fine and um, would be great for any normal person any normal bass player would think it was Awesome. It's a 300 watt Trace Elliott head with two by 15 uh, custom built cabinet. Um, unfortunately, I'm not your normal bass player. Uh, you probably noticed that by the amount of gear I had stacked up. Um, so that's <laughs> if you can hear that. That's my honestly. That's my shiny socks on the chrome on this chair. Um, yeah, great place really nice uh, so we're back up there next week 
uh, we need to find the guitar player and a keyboard player or a guitar player or a keyboard player or somebody who plays guitar and keyboard or a singer or something um, just uh, got fed up with making the same noise for the last two or three albums um, with just me and Sam uh, me playing bass and trying to make a guitar noise with the bass at the same time, hence all the two stacks of gear. And then the last album um, we wrote and recorded, um, I was never happy with it and I ended up putting guitar, proper actual guitar parts over the top of it, um, which came out all right. Unfortunately, none of you have heard it yet because I recorded all the guitar parts six months ago and we still haven't managed to... Um, upload the new tracks onto our website at uh, Springy and the Blokes Reverb Nation. So, yeah, sorry about that. Some point in the future, we will upload the all the songs with the guitar parts on. So basically, that means we need a guitar player um, and or keyboard player. Uh, what we ended up doing on Tuesday night. Um, we ended up just doing some covers, but with drums and bass and just um, me using a um, a valve distortion pedal, just so it didn't sound like just drums and bass. Um, it was fine, knocked out a couple of covers, but not ideal, not where I want to go. Um, anyway, it was a really nice place a pleasure to practice that. So on that I'll show you my completely different bass setup, bass amp setup anyway. You remember last time we had a look at this there were two 15 inch cabinets, two 2x10 two cabinets, a Harky 200 watt uh, hybrid valve um, solid state bass amp and a 100 watt valve PV valve king head uh, making the bass tone and the rhythm guitar tone uh, well now all that's gone and we've got a pile of blankets um, so whatever whatever I bring into this house tends to get covered in stuff for some reason anyway I'll, I'll move that and you can see the amp so, this was my find. Um, I was very lucky with this. I sold all the rest of the gear, the whole lot. Um, all I've kept is my leads and my guitars and a couple of pedals. But this, um, there you go. Ashdown Evo uh, ABM, ADM, ABM 500 Evo. It's a 575 watt amp. Um, even though it says 500 there, the new version of it is actually an Evo 600, but it's the same amp at 575 watts. Um, 15 inch speaker, uh, a little dinky tweeter in there, so there is actually a tweeter in there. You can't really see it, it's in there, and a, and a port. Um, I'm all, I always like the 15, I've got to have a 15, um, it's just the sound I like. Um, I will hook this up at some point and give you a proper demo, but it's sort of a bit wasted on YouTube because they compress everything and unless you're listening to it on a massive system or some decent uh, headphones, you can't really hear bass on YouTube. So anyway, what we've got, uh, right, Ashdown, Ashdown are Trace Elliott, uh, Trace Elliott used to be Trace Elliott. And then the guy who owned it sold it. Um, a couple of years later, he started Ashdown. Um, they sound, the reason I like Ashdown, I've had a couple of these before, not the 500, I've had a 300. The reason I like these is because they sound like Trace Elliott's, <laughs> strangely enough, bearing in mind that's what they are. Um, so, pretty simple amp really. Uh, input volume, so that's like your gain, input gain. Uh, it's passive and active and passive, depending on your bass. I use passive. Uh, now this 
is a really good thing. Um, in is just a flat EQ. And out is a, a very typical um, smiley face uh, scooped graphic on its own. Um, which happens to be the sound I like just for bass. So we've then got this, what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven band EQ, uh, which you can have on or off. Now it sounds, actually it sounds great because what I do, um, you, you will have noticed on my Harky amp, I just have a scooped EQ, um, which is, uh, no, it's, it's that. But when I want to play a bit of slap, I put the EQ in, it gives the bottom end, I've, that's moved actually. Um, this is still scooped, but it's got a bit more bright and a bit more deep, so that when I'm playing slap bass, um, it just accentuates it. But when I'm doing that, I need to use the compressor. Um, because with all the extra bottom end boost and a little bit of low mid boost, high mid boost and treble on, um, when I hit it with my thumb, it farts a bit. So I use the compressor. I'm not a fan of compressors unless I'm doing slap bass and I've had the compressor on in about the middle and it just stops it farting. Um, valve drive. Now, this is not like an overdrive or a distortion. It's basically, there is a 12AX7 valve in here in the preamp stage. So if you want it to sound more sort of old school, um, here we go, my noun apnea has just clicked in and I can't remember the name of the very famous um, bass amps that everyone uses in studios, but there you go, it'd be an Ampeg. Um, no, got it, it might come back later. Anyway, if you want that old school bass sound, um, you sort of um, Palladino, Marcus um, Pistorius, uh, Marcus Miller, that sort of old school bass sound, whack the valve in. Um, it's a bit warmer, a slight break up on the, um, it, it will, as any valve, it will start to crackle and bass break up eventually. But anyway, uh, strangely enough, my preferred tone is the Trace Elliott scoop, but the solid state sound scoop, not the valve sound scoop. So that's just how I like it. Um, Subharmonics. Uh, it's basically just an octave below. Um, don't use it. Um, not a fan of octavers. Um, it works in certain situations. I'd rather actually bung a chorus through it or whatever. So that, that doesn't get used. Um, mute, which I don't need because I use my, um, oh, where is it? I use my tuner, pitch black as a mute. What you do is you kick that in, it mutes the sound and brings the tuner in. Uh, this thing's amazing. I've had this maybe probably 10, 12 years. It was about about just under sixty pound when I bought it, which I thought was like ridiculously expensive for a tuner. But I've had this. Um, I've probably eaten twelve other tuners in the time I've had this. Um, this is brilliant. So I use this as a mute, and the functions are nice and clear. So that's that. Uh, so we don't need the mute. Um, Di. Now this is going to be handy for recording because I normally mic up. The base cabinet to get the the full effect um, or sometimes I go straight into the desk and then use the computer to EQ but on this it's got a DI and you've got post or pre EQ so basically um, pre EQ will be signal Basically, what goes in there and through there, but not through the EQ, comes out of there into the recorder. Post EQ means what you've put on here, any EQ you've put on here will come out. Well, you don't want that for recording, really. Well, I don't, anyway. Um, 
and then there's the output volume so it's sort of silent loud bloody loud ridiculously loud ear splitting the oh my god the house has fallen down so this has basically replaced my four cabinet stack and it's as loud um having to play with it a bit to get the tones but the idea is oh let's stop shaking uh well oh hang on and this thing which is made of solid solid metal proper steel this is a, a heavy bit of kit um that's just a foot switch so that you can turn on and off those individual bits with your little feet which is very handy uh yeah got this i just stumbled upon this um it was what do you call it um x demo it's a new amp um but it's been in a shop as a demonstrator um now it came from uh an Ashdown, um, an Ashdown showroom. I really ought to get the address on that. Um, I can't remember where where it was from. It was on eBay, um, but basically it's X demo. When the new lines come out, then they put the new versions. They'll put one of each of each amp in their shop as demonstrators, um, and then obviously these ones. Uh, no longer required and I got a ridiculous deal on this I, I was I, I didn't actually believe it when I saw it um, it was advertised at 350 pound or offers on eBay and I did my homework and I checked out that the seller was genuine and they do actually exist as shop and everything and I thought well if it's come from an Ashdown showroom um, which I know nothing about. I'm guessing for all the Ashdown, what do they do? They only do amps. They must be a showroom maybe for dealers, music shops, dealers to come and try the equipment. and Or I don't know, or maybe it's like the Bang & Olufsen shop and it's just for people to come in and try something and then buy. I, I don't really, I'll have to find out more. Anyway, so it's £350, which was ridiculous because the 300 the 300 watt mag is six or 700 pound. And last time I, I had a little bit of a scout and the cheapest one I could find was 750, which was a B stock. And a new one was a um, thousand and 77 pound or something. Anyway, um, 350, I put in an offer at 300 come straight back accepted sold so i got this for 300 quid it's new it's x demo got the the proper box it came in um the instructions the all, all the bits all the paperwork came with it um so i was amazed stunned and amazed um anyway it's not the first one i've had but it is the first 575 watt one um now, uh, I'm going to turn the camera around because um, it's obviously with me, nothing simple. It's quandary time, but I love that. It sounds great with any of my basses, and that uh, pedal is really handy. I bought the pedal separately from Guitar Amp and Keyboard in Brighton, 50 quid, 49 quid, and it was new, posted. But I figured... Um, the only time I'll use it will just be to put the compressor on and the EQ and compressor on when I'm doing slap bits. But but it's worth having, even though it weighs as much, literally, uh, more than about three house bricks. Right, turn him round. Right, so the quandary was at the new rehearsal studio. Um, brilliant place. Um... The bass setup, as I said, not strictly to my taste. Um, it's a nice 300 watt 
Trace Elliott head, which is basically the same as that Ashdown, but not as powerful. But he's had somebody locally has made him a 2x15 stacked tall cabinet, which should be fine, but he's got it stuck on legs, like six inch legs. Um, so all the bottom end is not coming through the floor as it should be. Now, um, credit to the guy, he's not a bass player, he's not a drummer, he's a guitarist. Um, so he's got a lovely guitar stack up there. Um, we've sort of, or will be having a little play with the drum kit and tuning it and bits and pieces because he knows nothing of drums, but he's got a lovely kit up there, really nice. And boy, did he get a bargain on that kit. Bought it off a of Vicar. But um, lovely Mapex Horizon kit. Beautiful. So it just needs tuning. Uh, yeah, and the bass stack, he's not a bass guy. So he's bought a good head. He's had this double stacked 15s cabinet custom made by someone, which should be awesome. Unfortunately, it's sitting six inches off the floor. Now... It's probably fine for anyone else up there, but for me, I'm such a tart. I'm such. I'm so finicky about my sound. Um, I was struggling to get anything out of it that I liked. Um, I tried to convince him to take the legs off, um, but he didn't seem to want to go there. Um, so then I thought, well, I can take my Trace Elliot, uh, Trace Elliot Ash down. Same difference. Sorry. Uh, my amp up there and um, just use that because I can get the bass sound I like. Um, that sort of defeats the object of going up to the new studio-ish because the old place we used to rehearse, we used to have to drag all of the gear out every... Um, so I'm just watching the people who work in the factory about a mile down the road walk past. Uh, it must be shift change. Um, yeah, so now I'm lost. I got distracted. Yeah, I could take the amp up there. Um, but the old place, so we just have to get all the gear out. But then again, I did have four bloody great big cabinets, two amps, cables, pedals and everything. Um, and the idea was to get away from that. I went up there with just my bass guitar in a case, uh, my bass guitar in a gig bag. And that one silver case with some leads and a pedal in it, which was luxury. Um, so this Tuesday coming, I'm not going to take my amp. Um, I had this bright idea that what I can do is use his, use his bass amp as it is, as backline, and DI it into the PA because he's got a nice PA system up there. So I'm going to try that. I'm just going to DI it direct into the PA just to give me a little bit more surround from it, a bit more depth. Um, if that works, fine. It's just one more cable to take up there. If not, um, I'll just take the, not to trace Elliot, the Ashdown with me. Um, which is happy days because it's one, extremely heavy, but it's one object as opposed to four bloody great objects and two heavy amps and all the stuff that goes with it. So there you go. That's it. That's the, I don't know what's with the finger today. Um, that's it. Enough of that. Um, oh, I've been having stuff looked at. I'll just give you a quick, I might as well just update everything. Um, this has just become the update channel now, hasn't it? There's nothing actually happens on this channel, it's just the update. Um, so on Tuesday, I'll see if I can promise cross fingers to actually do a bit of recording, video recording up at the rehearsal studio so you can see how we get on with the DI in the bass through the PA. You probably won't hear it because of uh, YouTube sound things and if you, unless you've got some nice Sennheiser studio headphones on or um, a ridiculously stupid bassy um, hi-fi system. Um, I apologise for that actually. I expect plenty of you have got really nice sound systems at home or bloody decent headphones. That was really pompous of me to even 
be saying that, wasn't it? So no, I apologise. Um, you can have a listen through your lovely headphones or your lovely hi-fi or your brilliant TV or your lovely soundbar at maybe the difference between the two bass things. Um, never assume, Springy. It makes an ass of you and me. Right, I'll just give you a quick look out the window. Uh, now I'll stop this thing. Right, so, desperate to spend all the money I've earned on the outage, <laughs> which it was always the intention. Um, many years ago, I had all this concreted, and for some reason I had gravel there, and I gravel down the side. Never liked it, because this tree, whatever it is, it's horrendous, it drops all different things at all different times of year. There's like constantly sap, and then you've got little tiny little seeds and leaves and bits of twigs and everything. So this always looks like a crap hole. I've always wanted to block pave it. Um, block pave because there's a lot of concrete. So anyway, I've had, uh, is it one or two? Th no, two people have been round to do a quote for block paving this. I'm going to go for sort of charcoal grey because there's too much red brick everywhere. My house is that colour, red brick. And this side bit, that little bit up the side, which I'm always dragging the uh, slate out because I park my van right next to the fence so that I can get my motorbike out the side gate. So anyway, that is going to be concreted and then one row of um, block pavers up near the fence in case I have to ever change any fence posts, my concrete ones or wooden ones. I can take out three of the block pavers and replace a post and then put the block pavers back in, which was a suggestion by one of the guys who came around and did a quote last night. I would never have thought of that. So that and that is going to be done. Um, and the dreaded carport roof, uh, which you can't see because I'm indoors. But anyway, you've seen it on many other videos. The carport roof is uh, I've had a quote this morning for the carport roof um, to be boarded and a one piece rubber coating all the way um, stuck down with trims around the edge and, and guttering on the front and everything in other words professionally done uh, the guy's coming back with the quote tomorrow for me and then in here this bow window, bay window, whatever you call it. Outside, the lead flashing on top, um, which is painted with black goo. And there's some a few splits in the flashing, which goes about there. Anyway, that is going to be replaced. And my, I don't, I can't zoom on this, but that house over there, the bay window on it, is just like plain lead. And it's got a little frilly bit around the edge. It, it's, if I could zoom in, I'd show you. But basically, that one looks really nice and posh. So I've asked him to reproduce that for me. So he's coming back with quotes. Oh dear. So there you go. There's the update. Let's turn you back round. I don't think there's anything else going on. Block pave, concrete pave, carport roof, bay window roof. Nope, that's it, and that'll be all my money gone <laughs> from from the outage. Uh, let's stop. Alrighty, that's it. Oh, what's on the telly? Who's that? What's he doing? Is that an advert? Yeah, uh, that must be an advert. Anyway, that's me. Uh, that's everything updated. So... Peace and love. Uh, I'll see you next time. I've been Springy. Take care.